why should we be back, going back and forth? I'm asking this question because the same agenda which the, uh, the Patriot Front is also championing to have ECO again away the repo. Mm. You know, why, why should it be like that? Why no, can't we the, try other leaders the, man, or other people? A repo the repo agenda has mm. been, uh, and the wind of a repo the repo has been uh, blowing across the globe. We started with Brazil and other exactly. countries uh, mm. and the uh, other countries emulated mm. and now mm. we had the similar situation for example in Botswana mm. because victory, basically the victory in Botswana is uh, Ian Kama's victory mm. you know he decided to have uh, you know Duma as one of his uh, guys to support of course because they attempted you know to block Ian Kama and all those things he had saved all his terms. You know, I think he was not even eligible to stand, but he found, you know, young people that he could support. Mm. Um, that wind has blown in one of the biggest democracies that has um, remained more or less like a model. Mm. I think uh, this only happened according to what we're getting about 135 years ago or 33 years ago. Uh, where a president lost and then later on re-elected. Uh, so Donald Trump has broken record and we think that uh, in Zambia uh, we actually are going to break record uh, of having a former ruling party bounce back. Uh, it, we are very convinced that it will bring maturity and sanity in our democracy because opportunistic politics will come to an end. Uh, 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 Donald Trump's uh, Victory uh, speaks to many positive things. Uh, I know there are people who want to zero in and start examining his in temp temperaments and so on. That's secondary. I mean, these are peripheral issues. The real issue. Is Watch the entire video, my lovely viewers. I mean, from start to finish to get the whole thing, without wasting much of your time. Let's get right into it. Hi lovely viewers, it's me again, your one and only Mtati Mpundu. Welcome to my YouTube channel. If this is your first time on my channel, kindly subscribe to my YouTube channel by hitting the red subscribe button down below and turn the bell icon to join the notification squad. Don't forget to like, share and leave a comment. Tell me what you think about this video in the comment section below. I'll be super glad to hear from you lovely viewers. What will you do? Don't worry. They are because certain the that vehicle here seems to be divided. No, no, like, no, 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 no. It's it, like not show up and I'm PF. Uh, Anyone can wake up, IP can wake uh, up to, tomorrow and say, I'm a president of the PF. No, 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 no. Uh, no. And the narrative will go on like that. No, I'm sure. But IP, to the work was serious. Not to come on a must to the Tambeta Malite. Am I a connoisseur of a bomb? To the quad to the moon heat up. They're sweating up, but I'm still just, uh, you know, trying to advance the argument for some people to hear. But we are suffering the anguish. I am convinced that after one hour of interviewing me under this environment and this heat, I don't think you're going to be going home proudly saying you're going to vote for UPND. The heat we are feeling here can't compare to the heat the Zambian people are experiencing and suffering out there. Okay? So for us, we would rather be on the side of the Zambian people. But in terms of the strategy around the vehicle, don't worry about that. Mr. Haka in the HM, we will take him on and very soon we'll be taking him to the cleaners. It's only uh, a people are not strategic that discuss everything in public. When you when PF decides to issue a statement, decides to send something on the blogs, it's calculated. And the UPND have perfectly fallen into the trap because they react to everything on social media. Mm. Let's talk about uh, the US elections. Um, we, we followed this you know, interesting debate and activities in USA where Joe Biden, I mean Donald Trump, I don't know, I keep on mentioning Joe Biden. Donald Trump, uh, when he announced his uh, comeback, it sounded like it was, it was a taboo, it was, it was a joke. He ran with it and uh, the, the system tried to stop him from contesting uh, you know, the elections, but eventually he pushed himself further uh, on the ballot. As we speak today, the man has been declared as a winner. 
or the 47th president of uh, USA. What does it mean to you as a part of the front and uh, the opposition in Zambia or perhaps in, in Africa in general? Let, let me, I think you're saying you're using long terminologies. Mm. He pushed himself. Mm. No. It's the people of the United States of America that pushed him. Right. They demanded for him. Mm. They supported him. The system, the Democrats attempted not only to block him through judicial war, lawfare, mm. they also attempted through what we witnessed, you know, to eliminate him. Uh, attempted the assassins. Mm. Uh, is it two, three, four times? Yeah. Three times. Three times. One where he was physically harmed, others where obviously before any uh, fatal action was taken, they were prevented. Okay? That's what happens when a government is desperate. Okay? So for us, first of all, we congratulate Dr. I mean, uh, Donald Trump. Um, and you've noticed that Africa celebrated his... Uh, Victory. Hmm. Why should Pure, so? Purely because of two things right. or three things. One, Donald Trump, when he, he was president, he made it very clear that he didn't want to interfere in the internal affairs of other countries. And when he came to Africa, he said the heavy handedness of the West, particularly America, in determining, you know, not only policy but the governance processes, including elections and so on, he will not tolerate that. Let Africa deal with his problems. Actually, he was even saying, this tube or bottle you have been feeding from, uh, from America of aid and so on, has spoiled you people. You have enough resources, you can actually self-determine in terms of the economy and other things. So I'm going to pull it off. Let that man the welfare of Americans. Also find your own resources. You, he said that in many ways than one. At some point, he, he even used crude words, which yeah. people cried about. But in principle, you're saying, can, can you, as Africans, wake up, use your resources, work, you have competent you know, citizens now in view of the fact that you have been able to educate the citizenry, you have some of the brilliant engineers on the globe. Do you know that... The, the health sector in the U.S. is run by Africans. Most of the doctors, nurses, and all these who provide health services, most of them Africans. Even the, the, the financial sector, now you're having the Africans being more dominant. And all that, mining and otherwise. We have actually, we have exported more human resources out there who are running big entities but they are not utilized on the continent. They are not utilized in Zambia. We should be ashamed of ourselves. Therefore, because of that uh, progressive policy that seems to be pending at temporarily at the initial stage, some of us believe that Trump is the right man to be in such a very powerful global office of uh, White House or over office. Mm. Two, for Africans, there are certain values and and, uh, and uh, cultural norms that uh, are difficult to compromise. For Zambia, which is even declared a Christian nation, mm. to ever think that somebody would wake up from somewhere and try and impose on us alien, you know, uh, abominable values like LGBT rights and all that, that the Democrats through was trying to advance. When she visited Africa, you heard what she said when she was in Ghana. You heard what she said when she was in Tanzania. You heard her attempts to try and make pronouncements here in Zambia over LGBT. For the first time after she visited, this government had the police escort and protect a procession of those who are advocating for LGBT with their flags. It has never happened on the soils of this country. It's abominable. And some of us believe that maybe that's how come things are so tough for this government. Because they are pretending they associated with the organizations like the Foundation for the Soros 
who are clearly advancing these values. The Saka Indigenous and his government have proudly associated with this. At the State House now, we have the Tony Blair Foundation having very serious interaction and actually a unit, policy unit that is actually there. But Tony Blair is an ambassador of what? LGBT things. We have ended up entangling ourselves in abominable, you know, alliances and associations. A country that has covenanted with God. When I saw the Ishrema uh, in his speech attempting to present himself like he's praying, God, you know that we're just agents. Give us rain and so on. Even the demeanor itself didn't demonstrate that this is a man with the, uh, a sense of reverence towards God that he could actually present a petition in that manner. At the platform itself was wrong. It's an, an hypocritical way of wanting to present the needs of the Zambian people before God that is so sovereign. And uh, uh, let's not joke around such things. These are people who were lambasting President Lungu for declaring a day of national prayer reconciliation you know, uh, uh, and you know, forgiveness. This is, these are people who are lambasting President Lungu for actually attempting to build uh, the house of God as a symbol of our reverence and appreciation that God rules in the affairs of men. They were debating on the floor of parliament, mocking the day, mocking all these attempts. Now they are stuck. That's when they want to actually go to God and say, can you help us? But what is even more revealing about the hypocrisy of these people? Two days after President HH was trying to pray on that day when they were saying that you say was Amen. trying to pray. Yes, was trying to pray. Well, he was trying to pray. Because I think it was just an afterthought during his speech that let me say something that to, to try and impress people. Because if it was a prayer and he really respects the his communion with God, it would have been in an appropriate manner, in an appropriate stage, it should have been intentional, it can't be flip flop flopping. And because it was flip-flopping, a, a Nijek, uh, you know, um, attempts to engage God, he also attempted to engage other gods. When he went to a traditional ceremony and says, you chiefs used to have powers to call reigns, can you call reigns? So we don't know whether he wants the traditional powers or he wants God's power to be in this Republic of Zambia. But that's what happens when you are not focused and you don't know where you stand. You can't define what your conviction is, whether you are a Christian or not. And that's how come possibly we need to examine these things. I don't want to start you know, pitching in any way in terms of examining his faith because ultimately Jesus is not a crowd savior. He's a personal savior. So it's up to him. But we can only judge and know him by the fruits mm -hmm. and the fruits are seen in what he says and his actions his level of vengeance his level of retribution his level of vindictiveness doesn't speak to some of the things he professes mm -hmm. you know and uh, possibly that's where we are that come where, where we are joe biden and his administration um rules or ruled um, america for a single term mm -hmm. something that is seems to be quite uh, you know becoming so familiar in so many countries uh, today including back home in africa w w what is the reason why we see these uh, regime change within a term a leader is uh, sent packing you see the there is a, an awakening globally young people citizens we're in an era where information is flying you know at supersonic speed and those of us who are seeking for office through democratic means must know that we have to up the game. The up the game in the sense that, uh, first of all, you must know that you're under the spotlight. There's nothing you can hide. The only way, currency, for you to succeed in your political career is to be transparent and be honest. When you can't do something, just tell them. Don't try and say to the citizens that you are Superman, you are going to solve all this, and soon you'll be found out. The days of the Kaundas who would...
recognize people by and people just remain impressed are ah, long gone because when you are doing chisokone chisokone some young kid is on the whatsapp is on instagram is on you know x and all these social platforms and discover that that nonsense called chisokone is an abuse that is not permissible in a democratic society mm -hmm. so to that effect <laughs> Mr. Kainde's uh, uh, approach to governance and politics is a cake. It can't work today. It used to work in Kaunda, but he used to admire his politics uh, that he wants to implement them today. He doesn't realize that having students on a Saturday in Copper Belt, you go and organize pupils to come and receive you at a function, is an abuse. It may have worked in Kaunda days when we were growing up. We were all called, come to school, Dr. Kaunda is coming. It was such a great privilege to see that white handkerchief. We were hypnotized by that because we were not exposed to any information. That time there was no television. You understand what I'm saying? There's a call up a minute, my days ago at the TV, Mulaini Mwamino Munkara, maybe Kulichapi Wabiri Wana Ma TV. Elo TV is a soccer for 16 hours. Vavala for 21 hours. It's just 16 hours in Kakwana. When you pay back to the TV for an neighbor, you have to go and bath first. So if you're a bit lazy around the water, you will not end up having the privilege to watch the revision. But today, TV is 24 hours. And those days, there was only one channel. Today, there are 500 channels, 800 channels. You understand what I'm saying? You are getting information from everywhere depending on what you are interested to know and learn. There are channels that are educative, that are informative, that do research on your behalf. The phones we use today, you can get any information at any given time. So people who are dealing with information at their fingertips, you can't handle them the way you are handling my grandfather, who only was tuning to Radio 1. And in Radio 1, news was coming maybe twice a day. And even that news was only Kaunda has done this, Kaunda has done this. And after that, Fiabukai, after Fiabukai, is another joke, another joke. And that's all. We are leaning, listening to stories on, in oral teachings, you know, through stories and Utishim. That was what was on radio. But today, how many radio stations do we have? We have numerous community radio stations. And even if you don't give licenses nowadays, people can have a radio and a studio and be able to broadcast on Facebook. So, this, Mr. Aka in the of my brother, goes, wow, a jija guti, niza, jamu, jamu erensiki, jamu muriba gaunda, ngata jibere kisuno mudara, come out of that uh, primitive way of handling, you know, governance issues and politics, because you are imbalanced each and every day. Because sometimes you even wonder when the president speaks, is there anybody who is there to, you know, you know, advise this president? You go and speak. If you are speaking during Kaunda days, you are in Wengwa or you are in Galomo or you are in Choma or anywhere in a traditional ceremony and you go and speak. It will remain in your village. But today it can't. Now people are asking in Nurundas, Brenda Manta Konichani guys. Zili wuli za mina alu nangula mwondo. You understand what I'm saying? And then people begin to say, but what kind of insult is this? But maybe within the confines of your village, they may understand you. But actually, you know that some of those sayings emanate from stories and, and uh, adages that spoke to the greediness of parents and other people those days. There is a saying that when you said Benda Matago indeed that that it's a story in a book that talks of a greedy father who went hunting during a hunger disaster like ours. But because he can't share what he, he has caught in the in his hunting ex expedition, he ties some stake uh, you know on his waist. So when he's talking to his children, he tell them, uh, if you want to eat something, bend a matter, go cut part of your you know, skin and eat. Then when they try to cut, of course, because it's painful, they can't. Then he himself goes and cuts that piece of meat which has tied in his and eats. It speaks to greedness. That metaphor. It's a wrong, misplaced you know, metaphor. But as it were, because somebody is not thinking, 
They just speak. And they don't understand that today information flies faster than anything. So anyway, um, as far as we're concerned, we are marching with the Zambian people steadily. Mm. And uh, we will not disappoint the Zambian people. And, and Everything has been properly considered, calculated. We know the Mingarat of UPND mm -hmm. and we know where they are going, what they are attempting to do with everybody they have employed and they want to deploy to destroy PF. We have read their script back and top and bottom. Mm. And we are determined to make sure that within the Mingarat they are playing, we will play super political, you know, um, moves that will get the Zambian people's aspirations and desires not be betrayed in 2026. We had the elections in Botswana as well, where uh, Masisi just lost the election, uh, you know, terribly lost, I should make mention. There was a dismal performance that uh, he puts up on this political party, which had stayed in power for uh, 58 years from the time of independence, only to be uh, defeated now, and they came out fourth why is the let's look at also i'll combine this question with the joe biden the appetite by the electorate worldwide it appears why should they go and recall a former head of state to come back to state or white house rather unlike maybe going for a new political party in this regard why should we be back, going back and forth i'm asking this question because the same agenda which the the public front is also championing to have ECL again away the repo. Mm. You know, why, why should it be like that? Why no, can't we the, try other leaders, man, other people? Arebo uh, the repo agenda has mm. been, uh, and the wind of Arebo the repo has been uh, blowing across the globe. We started with Brazil and other exactly. countries, the and, mm. and the other countries emulated. Mm. And now <clears throat> we had the similar situation, for example, in Botswana. Mm. Because victory, basically the victory in Botswana is uh, Ian Kama's victory. Mm. You know, he decided to have, uh, you know, Duma as one of his uh, guys that to support. Of course, because they attempted, you know, to block Ian Kama and all those things. He had saved all his terms. You know, I think he was not even eligible to stand, but he found, you know, young people that he could support. Mm. Um, that wind has blown in one of the biggest democracies that has um, remained more or less like a model. Mm. I think uh, this only happened according to what we're getting about 135 years ago or 33 years ago, uh, where a president lost and then later on re-elected. Uh, so Donald Trump has broken record. And we think that uh, in Zambia, uh, we actually are going to break record mm. uh, of having a former ruling party bounce back. Uh, it, we are very convinced that it will bring maturity and sanity in our democracy because opportunistic politics will come to an end. Mm. Uh, a, a, a Donald Trump's uh, victory uh, speaks to many positive things. Uh, I know there are people who want to zero in and start examining his in temp temperaments and so on. That's secondary. I mean, these are peripheral issues. The real issue is examine his policy position and what has been consistent about. Mm. And he strikes uh, most of us like a person who has a dual personality. He has this loud side of him, mm. but he's a man of faith. He seems to really anchor his uh, discourse publicly on the values of uh, Christianity. And for Zambia and I think many African countries who uh, are quite religious and, and uh, have their uh, their um, reverence towards God, believe that uh, this uh, gentleman uh, would be a good catalyst mm. to allow Africans express themselves, you know, with their religious way of approaching things, mm. would express themselves and be able to have their, you know, uh, potential unlocked. And then this will lead to, I think, uh, a greater, you know, form of success mm. economically. Uh, improvement of people's welfare, you know, cleaning up the governance system of our respective countries so that our democracy begins to thrive. Uh, and uh, because there's no interference, we think that uh, we'll would be able to utilize even our own resources, you know, effectively. Um, we think that uh, with his approach to things of what he has pronounced and, you know, promised, 
we will be able to see the Russia Ukraine war, you know, uh, come to an end. We expect that the Gaza challenge there will come to an end because I think his approach is more practical than anything else. They, Joe Biden's were talking of wanting to intervene in the Russia Ukraine war, but they were the ones fearing the war by sponsoring one of the, you know, the, the warring parties. Uh, and uh, NATO was actually the cause for which that war started because of the proximity to Russia and obviously threatening the sovereignty of Russia and its military um, and security you know, uh, measures that were placed. So Ukraine was just a victim mm. and is being used by the support of the U.S. to continue looking like uh, they can fight and so on. But that fight is really not even a Ukraine fight. Mm. It's a fight you know, Russia against NATO but using a conduit, in this case Ukraine. We think that uh, that's in practical terms. Mm. We think that I think Donald Trump will be more practical Looking at even the message that came from Zelensky uh, prior to the election and now that which has come after the election, it shows that uh, um, we may not see that war continue for a longer period of time. Unless he was like Mr. Kainde-Chilema, who made one promise and came and did something opposite. Mm. But we're confident that I think he'll be able to follow through because he's, he's quite a you know, tenacious leader, determined leader, looking at how against all odd he was able to fight and wage an effective campaign, and he has you know, gone back to the over office. Mm. Let's speak to the political activities that will be happening tomorrow as we wind up the program uh, uh, on Apple SG. Um, I know that uh, Donse will be officially launching uh, you know, um, the, its alliance tomorrow. And um, w what is the position of the Patriotic Front in that regards over these political alliances? I know that um, uh, PF or is here was part of the uh, is part of the uka alliance as well and um i think some three weeks ago you held a central committee where you as a chief executive officer of the pf you gave now you know you you were given a report you know and you produced or re you released uh, some new rules of engagement for any political party that would want to associate with you there are some guidelines in that regard mm. what is the fate of uh, the pf in the uh, Oka at this moment? I don't think there is any issue uh, of, of fate of PF mm. in Oka. Okay. okay. Um, mm. uh, let me talk about Tonsa first of yeah. all. We, we have been you know, receiving calls from the Zaman people mm. appreciating the fact that even if we are a very strong opposition political parties, in view of the facts that can never be disputed, mm -hmm. we have 58 members of parliament, a few disgruntled, who I think along the way will come in line. We have over 40 council chairpersons and uh, mayors. We have uh, close to 500 councillors across the country. Okay? We have a membership and structures across the country. There is no other political party that is as big as PF in terms of structural and, you know, layout across the country, not even the UPND. The UPND may have come into office because there was this wind and hype and so on, but in terms of structural arrangement and machinery, PF still beats UPND because they are areas where UPND doesn't exist to which PF exists. But we exist in areas where UPND is a stronghold. Is a stronghold. I hope you understand. So, um, the call for a united France front in the opposition is clearly motivated by the fact that the German people don't want to gamble. They want a clear and clean victory in 2026 because they can't stand having UPND continue beyond 2026. Hence, our open door policy. There are some political parties that were quick and willing to work with us like uh, those that came and worked with Patrol Front under the UCA umbrella. But as it were, uh, uh, UCA and the membership is not enough. You know, we have been approached by others. Uh, I can tell you that uh, we also have been able to approach others in terms of uh, uh, encouraging them to hear what the Zambian people 
are calling for a united opposition front. Among those that approached us was uh, the Tonse you know, Alliance uh, platform. And uh, at that time when we appro uh, approached us, we were also as a party going through a process of, process of introspection. Are we really engaging in a manner that to guarantee success of these alliances? We felt that uh, any relationship that is not properly defined mm. is doomed to fail. So the base is that let's retreat. And therefore, we uh, set up another committee to go and interrogate this idea of alliances mm. in a democratic setup. So they inquired both locally and internationally and came up with what was the minimum bench, benchmarks, if you like, mm. uh, eventually to translate it into rules of engagement. And those rules of engagement were shared to all those who cared to listen. And uh, those who are progressive looked at them, interrogated them, and accepted that I think this way we can be able to make progress. And came up with a criteria to which every member, whether political or non-political players, will be able to participate in this movement to help the Zambian people and be able to save them from the turmoil they're going through. Mm. So as far as PF is concerned, our approach is all-embracing. We are not into the business of wanting to pitch this against the other. Mm. We are into the business of bringing everybody together. It's not an easy undertaking. We have to be firm, mm. focused. Sometimes we look like we're a bit rough, but we also engage in diplomatic warfare, negotiating with colleagues, having tough conversations where we ask tough questions to bring each other to reality. So that at the end of the day, the question of the desires of the Zambian people to have the UPND leave office in 2026 is answered squarely. This is no child play. Mm. So to that effect, being the largest opposition political party, we are what you may call in Bemba and Koko. We have to bring everybody together. Mm. So we have Uka on this side. And uh, uh, for as long as UCA is ready to be progressive in terms of engagement and discussions, mm -hmm. we are available. What has been the response from UCA when, uh, when you engage? We have not exhausted that uh, process, but right. uh, we are in a hurry to make sure that everybody comes on board. Mm -hmm. Because if, for example, we take long to respond to Tonse, take long to respond to others, mm -hmm. um, we may actually be losing an opportunity for everybody, including UCA. How did you find yourselves in UCA in the first place as uh, SG? And later on, you realize that I think we need to put up a roadmap, some you know, rules of engagement. No, they, we found our, ourselves in obvious on the principal position mm. that uh, the idea of working together uh, from the demands of the Zambian people is, is something that uh, is a must. And therefore, an opportunity presented itself, mm. and therefore, we formed this movement and began a process of refining ourselves. But uh, in that process, we noticed that there could be some gaps. Some of the gaps are emanating from the fact that we went in ourselves mm. and maybe we didn't really set some benchmarks that would help our colleagues relate with us in a more clear manner without assumptions. In short, or you went into Uka in the first place in a disorganized manner. No, no, no. You are using a wrong term. Mm. Uh, you understand what I'm saying? I don't know. You're married? Yes, I am. You, yeah, if um, you're married, of, I don't know how you met your wife. Mm. I mean, it's, it's clear that possibly you find there are people who fall in love, they meet somebody at the supermarket and so on, buying bread and things like that. Mm. And you say to each other, hi, hi, I love you, I love you too. Uh, we love each other. Mm. Uh, can we even talk about uh, issues of marriage? And you start dating, going to movies and so on. Then you discover, mm, if we are just going to be going to movies and doing all these things, without defining clearly how we're going to operate. Mm -hmm. Let me ask tough questions. Do you go to church? Which, which church do you go to? Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Okay, I also go to church. How many children do you want, to, if you get money, do you want to have? Oh, I mean, maybe three or five. Oh, I think we have common ground. And begin to define those things. So that even when you're getting married, you are able to achieve some level of compat compatibility for purposes of having that relationship work, work. So there was nothing wrong in us finding common ground in terms of responding to the Zambian people. It's just a process now we're undertaking that is getting us to even define clearly how this very healthy relationship will even be fostered, you know, fostered to a greater height to work to save and meet the interests of the Zambian people. Mm -hmm. We are not in an attitude of wanting to say this one is good, is bad, that's one, uh, no, 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 no. 
everybody else's good provided on that platform we are honest to each other. So at this moment it appears the party front you want to be the main anchor of these alliances. It Whoever is, wants to work with you in your, according to your statement, yes. they have to agree to the terms and conditions that have been that's, up by the party that's, front. So uh, you'll be the main vehicle. Everybody we, should come on board, is it? Uh, well, that is or are you willing to compromise, for example, I, if IP has got a political party, mm. then I want to work with you. Then I say, okay, fine. Uh, you as PF, let's work on an equal basis. Listen, um, mm. let's face reality. Yeah. From our findings, there is no alliance that has ever worked without you acknowledging that you need an anchor mm. political party. <clears throat> okay, and in this case, the reality is that Patriotic Front, as it stands today, mm. is the anchor opposition political party. It's a reality. We come to the table mm. with all the things I've talked about, and therefore, when I come to IP, who, with good intentions and possibly effective as a person in his quest to save the Zambian people as a politician has formed a political party but he, he still has a just a political party among a nephew and a few friends and so on and so forth we, it would be unrealistic to suggest that mr ip now has become an eco partner with the patriotic front mm. okay while we have to respect and appreciate the input of ip and his political party they must also accept that we have an anchor political party that will carry us because the machinery of this political party is what we're going to depend on for us to be able to be, you know, in, you know effectively contest in the next election. Mm. election. So those are fundamentals that you can debate. But again, it, it can't be assumed that because you have come and these are realities, you have the mindset to appreciate the anchor political party or indeed the anchor political party will have the mindset to appreciate the effective and important role you are playing in this arrangement. Hence the rules of engagement. Mm. To say this is the role you are going to play, this is the role this other political party is going to play. Mm. But as an anchor political party, we are the only ones who have locus to bring everybody together. Mm. Because as it stands now, the most beautiful, beautiful, beautiful platform that everybody is uh, roasting for or is it, you know, yearning for, is that of patriotic front and is that of the fact that we also have a cerebral candidate in Edgar Jagualong. Mm. And everybody is saying Harebo Rapo agenda is what the Zambian people are singing in the bars, in churches, in you know in the markets, on the streets, at the farms and everywhere else, in the mines, both formal and informal. Everywhere you go, people are saying are they wearing up? Mm. Ah, and now, even America is singing the same song, are they up? Mm. Will I be right, or perhaps a viewer out there, will he or she be right to sense some forms of uh, selfishness uh, in you and the battery front where these alliances are concerned, in that it appears you just want everything to be uh, uh, about yourselves, you know? Uh, and uh, I'll tell you one thing, it reminds me a story of the UPND and how they started their uh, UPND alliance. There were a lot of confusion. There was a lot of confusion. Uh, some people even jumped out of the ship of the UPND alliance. One of them was uh, the NGC under Honorable Shimbakambui at the time, which led to the division where Honorable Opie Sagafumba remained in the UPND alliance while CK went to the other side. Because the argument at the time was that we need to find a neutral name for this alliance you can't take us to the upnd we, we, we're going to be puppets we, we, we look like we're parrots by the uh, of the upnd and we've got for example sean temba as well is a, a, part, a person who stood firm he said look we need to have a neutral name and upnd was accused that they were being selfish by bringing people or being the main anger unlike finding a neutral name aren't you also exhibiting the same tendency of being selfish so that you want everything to be about yourselves? You can't compromise? I don't know what uh, question you are trying to ask. Mm. But first it's of about all, your selfishness no, no, and the, perhaps uh, maybe the received uh, I don't know. Hypocrisy, hypocrisy. Hypocrisy in terms of what? In terms of uh, 
the same things with the UPND. If if the same character if, if, put up the UPND. Uh, okay. No no no. For, it is what you also try no, to portray. No, no. Don't uh, insult us by comparing us UPND please. You know, leave UPND with their you know demons on their own. I mean, we have too much to deal with the UPND mm. uh, and looking at even the way they have performed. I think uh, give us a bit of credit in terms of our decency to be honest with the colleagues. Mm. We have not deceived anybody. I've featured on this platform about press briefings. The president has expressed himself from the very day he came back from act, you know into active politics. You can go to his speech. There is nothing sinister about our engagement with colleagues. Okay. Even for us to retreat and say, can we have rules of engagement, which you have publicly pronounced, mm. how can that be that you are being selfish? We are telling you, this is how we are going to relate. How can that be selfish? The UPND, we are deceiving friends. We don't uh, practice deceit ourselves. We face each other in our, each other's eyes and say, this is how you are going to relate with me. Mm. And, you know, can you tell us whether it is acceptable to you? It's as simple as that. That's how it works, whether it's business, it's politics, in diplomacy and so on, you must have everything put on the table, defined. Mm. Then you can be able to bargain. Well, it's again, Uka, they seem to have their own rules as well. They're saying you can't have a political party which is already in an alliance belonging to another political uh, another alliance. That's what I'm saying. So that perhaps uh, how are that's you going to handle these issues? No, no, no. We are. It's a process. Mm. Uh, in this case. Why do you want to suggest that PF is the one that is selfish when we are saying let this movement be an all embracing? And we are saying if Uka has come, I mean Uka is there and Tonse has come, what is wrong with embracing Tonse? Why do you want to have a closed shop? Why do you want to uh, have an exclusive you know, club of the few? When the Zambian people are saying this is a serious matter, we want all of you to work together, mm. get the best human resource from everybody, assemble, have a formidable team, and be able to represent us and possibly have a chance to be able to govern us, uh, govern this country better than what we're experiencing now. Mm. How can it be that we're selfish in wanting to work with everybody? You know, I think it's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a misplaced assertion. Yeah. But I want to tell you yes. an, further answer that yeah. We have not insisted. That's how come we are comfortable with the pronouncement of Uka. Just like we are comfortable with the pronouncement of Tonsa. Mm. We have not said, say, PF. No. We have said, what is it that the Zambian people are demanding for? Mm. Any uh, platform that speaks to unity, that speaks to people coming together, we will embrace it. Mm. Tell me something. Mm. Will um, PF be part of the Tonsa launch tomorrow? Yes, 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 we will 100% are going will to be part. Will be there as well? Wow, ECO is going to be part of the launch. Right. Yeah. In one form or the other, he will be part of the, the launch. But of course, it's a press briefing. Mm -hmm. We have speakers that are going to speak at that press, press briefing. And the, as PF, we're going to participate, mm -hmm. you know, in terms of uh, endorsing the formation of Tonsi and launching Tonsi and being able to have all the processes that have been proposed mm -hmm. unveiled to them and people tomorrow and will proud, proudly participate. And we're doing this in good faith. Mm. We're not doing this in an, 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 as an affront against anybody. No, we're just saying, let everybody come on board. And we're saying this to everybody. Mm. This movement towards 2026 cannot be a, a movement of an exclusive club. No. This movement is for everyone. We are going to utilize every resource, including that of a former president, to bring everybody, including those who may have misunderstood this movement, mm. will convince them. Because we think we have superior you know, argument in relation to what the Zambian people are going through and what is needed for us to answer to their needs. So we are not intimidated by misunderstanding and mis you know, uh, mi you know, perceptions mm. and people misconstruing this and that around whatever it is. When you are right and you are moving on the right path, you are confident that along the way people will come and see that you meant well. If we are peddling deceit, lies, and the manipulation and so on, maybe we'll be afraid of being found out. But for as long as it's a sincere movement, an honest movement, we are confident that even those who are, who are afraid, who are not sure, along the way will discover that we mean well. President Lungu means well. PF means well. 
for the sake of the Zambian people. So you don't mind to belong to five, four alliances? It doesn't matter for We me. don't mind bringing all these uh, social groupings, political groupings together. Right. It's not about belonging. It's bringing them together. Mm. As the main anchor. Yes. Mm -hmm. You know, that's the role my father used to play, Ichikolwe. Mm. Children would be there misunderstanding each other. But there's always a way in which this each caller would say, come and come. Then they come to appreciate that the differences actually are minor compared to what should be able to bring them together. Mm. So those who are, you know, squeaking in that corner and that corner, please, that's not the main agenda. The main agenda is unity. I wish purpose. you had enough time to speak to these issues on for SG, really. Because uh, you earlier spoke about uh, relevance of these political parties and uh, you bragged that indeed uh, the PF, and these are facts on the ground, that the PF has got structures across the country, uh, members of parliament, we've got uh, ward councillors, council chairpersons, mayors. But, but again, my IP, when, why do you want to deliberately maliciously suggest that I was bragging when I was just stating facts? And I've mentioned that these are facts on the so ground. So if, well. if I say to you mm. that you're a man, and you agree with me that you are a man. How can that be termed as bragging? Indeed, I agree with you that... Uh, uh, use the the right, uh, just use the right first term. I'm not bragging. I'm just saying the correct position. And the fact on the ground is indeed that you've got uh, several members of parliament, it's one a, it's a fact, yes. 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 and mayors. Uh -huh. But again, let's look at the relevance of uh, some of these leaders or the people behind certain movements. Let's talk about Tonse. When you carry your research, you find that some of these names are people that really, if you check on the ground, their presence, their structures may be questionable. Of course, it's up for debate. It's not me. That's why you, know, uh, that's if you what, go to uh, people's part as well. You find that these are individuals whose political parties may be called maybe, uh, you know, a one man's political parties. And they were your associates, SG, in 2021, mm. or prior to the election in 2021, mm. of an election which you felt or you terribly. I lost. How I, I are they going to I don't know. To you your, seem to, your victory? You seem to have some appetite to discredit hmm. a, a process. You know what? I'm being very careful and okay. selective in my way. I said seemingly. Okay. Seems. Let, me, let me ask you a question. Yeah. We were in Uka, isn't it? And we are in Uka. Hmm. Okay? Yeah. We worked with the, uh, my good brother, Honorable Karaba. He was even the Minister of Foreign Affairs in PF. Hmm. You understand? We worked with the Madam Savoy mm. even in the 2021 election. Yeah. We worked with Honorable Savoy. Savoy HK didn't work with you in 2021. Which, 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 what uh, I'm saying we worked together. We so are denying that he was part foreign affairs. Right? Yes, he yes. was foreign affairs. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Okay. And he, he basically branched off, formed mm. a political party, and participated in an election. And the results are there for mm. everyone Just like he, we worked with the, you know, uh, Honorable Sakuba Scott. Mm. We, I think the new entrance in this situation... And the Honorable Nawak. Yeah, Honorable mm -hmm. Nawak. The new entrance here may just be uh, Madam Katek. And we worked Jackson with the, my young brother Jackson Siragu, Siragu during right. Buten and all those things. This didn't even participate in 2021. Mm -hmm. So we are not strangers to each other. Just like we worked with the other colleagues in uh, Zambia we want. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, Mohabi Lungo was our ambassador in the DRC, under patriotic front, and also was deployed in Washington, D.C. We worked with the, the likes of uh, uh, some of the colleagues that are in uh, Zambia we want. Mm. Just like we worked with some of the colleagues that were in, uh, the, that are in Tonsa. Politicians in Zambia is a constituency that has interacted with itself in many ways and whatever. But in this case, we are saying your relevancy PF is what I've talked about. The relevance of others, some of them are opinion makers. Mm. Some of them, yes, their party is still growing. But as an individual, they are a national personality that the Zambian people feel if put on a platform somewhere, they can be able to effectively save the Zambian people. Right. Okay. And to that effect, that as your closing remarks as we, go. we are not going to jump into this... Uh, narrative being created by detractors and wanting to suggest that there's something sinister or hypocritical about our moves. No, 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 no. Some of the people will not understand it today, us today. 
And that's what leadership is all about. It's not everybody that will understand you. Sometimes you have to march on towards the end. They will come and celebrate mm. that actually the decision you made, which we misunderstood, has come to benefit all of us. In this case, the benefit we are seeking for is not for individuals to get jobs and position themselves for jobs or indeed seek office. This is the benefit that must first of all accrue to the Zambian people. And then your capabilities as an individual will find you a place for you to contribute. Right. And if you are com comfortable and confident of what you are able to contribute and the value you bring to the table, you don't have to be scared. Be secure and be confident about yourself. Everybody else in you, in, 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 in the opposition, will play a role, right. depending on what their capability is, and will be able to save the Zambian people effectively, better than these uh, colleagues who have only but brought misery to the Republic of Zambia. Thank you very much. Honorable SJ, thank you so much. Good I evening. You. Thank you. This is DJ Mutati exclusive. Alright, that's all right for you today, lovely viewers. If you did enjoy the video, please don't forget to leave a comment in the comment section below. Tell me what you think about the video you just watched in the comment section below. I'll be super glad to hear from you, lovely viewers. Once again, I go by the name of Mutatim Pondum. I love you, peace. I gotta go.